Ladies and gents, boys and girls, hello and a very warm welcome from the Bio Row Workshop. There's a large number of people who discover rowing as adults and they feel like, hey, I missed out because I didn't start when I was young and now all my chances are gone. Well, this couldn't be farther from the truth. This entire video is about how to start late and how to become competitively fit. See, the point is, you may never enter a competition because you don't like to compete, or you may. However, just being competitively fit is a state that allows you to enjoy getting older in a much better state than 99% of all other people on the planet. Because a healthy, fit, competitively fit old rower is what everybody likes to be. First, start a bit of a background information. You see, I've got this new microphone set up. I'm trying better audio. I actually got myself a color checker to make sure I'm using better colors. So I'm trying to improve on all ends. And another thing that I changed for 2024 is I actually sit down and write the script for the entire video. That usually takes me two to three hours. The upside is that actually I can post some of these texts on the arm training website. So what is this video about? Well, first of all, it's about being competitively fit. You may or may not enter a competition, but just being competitively fit is a goal worthwhile attaining. That is huge. Being a competitively fit rower allows you to be ready for almost anything life throws at you. <laughs> Point number two, just like I've done with the previous video, how to develop a young kid into a high performance rower, I wrote a, a multi-stage plan, five stages this time, how to turn a beginner's rower, an adult late starter beginner's rower into a competitive ready rower. Because there are a couple steps you need to follow in order to avoid injuries. And that is actually the third point of this entire video. How do you avoid injuries? Because there are adult rowers with injuries. They start too early with high volumes with high intensities with strength training or that is not designed for them or no strength training at all or if they do strength it's the wrong kind of strength so i'm trying to use my experience from coaching high performance athletes to make masters faster and that's what i've been doing for the last 20 years i treat every athlete i'm working with the same for me, it doesn't make a difference if we talk about an Olympic level athlete or a master's athlete. And some people say, hey, it's not fun to work with masters. You have no idea. You have no idea. There is a lot of drama you don't have. And there is a lot of dedication. And masters athletes are sometimes even more fun to work with because you see what you're changing in their lives. The feedback that I'm getting. Sometimes that is worth more than a world championship medal or an Olympic medal. <music> One of my athletes, a U.S. Masters athlete, is 70 years old now. And he recently told me a story. I'm not going to mention his name. The story is interesting. He talked to his doctor, and the doctor was surprised and said, how, how do you do this? How are you so fit? And how can you do four training sessions a week or five training sessions a week? You're 70 years old. And my athlete said, well, I enjoy it. You see how fit I am. And... Then the doctor said, well, but rowing is not, you know, rowing doesn't keep you fit until you're very old. You don't see many 80-year-olds rowing on the water. And then my athlete said, uh, well, that's not true. You, you see them, but you don't recognize them as 80-year-olds because they look like very, very fit 70-year-olds. And that is the point of this entire video. When you're 15, you just want to be a grown-up adult. When you're 20 and you're a man, you just want to be Hulk himself. When you're 20 and a girl, you just want to be hot as hell and, you know, get the best guys, whatever your interest is. Eventually, life settles and the moment you're 25, you, you see the number 30 approaching rapidly and you, ah, well, I just still got time. No, you don't. The moment you turn 18, life starts to fly like crazy. And then you're 30 and you, okay, I'm 30, I'm 30. No, you're not 30. You're already approaching 40. You just turned 30 last week. No, that was 10 years ago. And all of a sudden you find yourself in that trap of life and probably you've got a family started or maybe not and you've got business and, and all that job life. You as a person 
you don't seem to count anymore. All that counts is business, family, life, being there for others, um, having savings, changing job, changing your house, buying a house, building a house, renovating an apartment, uh, taking care of your spouse, finding a spouse, not having a spouse. You don't seem to count until you reach a certain age, usually around 30. And at age 30, 40, 50, the latest, people wake up and say, hey, once upon a time, I had a life and I want to get it back. And I want to be fit because I don't feel fit anymore. I'm wasted, I've got lack of sleep. Hey, I hear you. I was, and partly I still am, in the same shoes. The problem with this is, and that's one of the main reasons why doing this video is very important to me personally. I see a lot of adult growers starting late getting injuries doing overtraining, being frustrated because there's a lack of progress. And I want to address this with a five-stage plan, how to develop as a role without overtraining, without the injuries, and with joy. Let's get started. What does it actually mean to be competitively fit? It's very simple. You're fit enough to enter a master's rowers competition. If you don't know what master's rowing is, it's essentially hobby, non-professional veteran rowing. This is not a low level kind of competition. These master's rowers are terribly fit. They are super fit. Sometimes they're better off than some of the youngsters you'll see. Some of these master's athletes have incredible VO2 max values. Some of them have incredible power, they're incredibly fit. They look like a model of a, I don't know, 40 plus catalog. This is what rowers are. And it might look and sound scary initially until you become part of that group. That group is awesome to be part of. It's not super fancy. It's not super elitist. It's just a good down to earth group. So being competitively fit means to be able, hypothetically, to enter a competition and not be last, or at least be somewhere in the middle or ideally in the top 10. I'm not even talking about winning yet. It doesn't mean you have to enter a competition, but it means that you're able to do so if you want it. It's about being as fit as somebody who does, having the right technique, having the right physique, because then you've got the choice. And you know what it means as well? That you have a well thought out personalized training plan and a strategy. Strategy is usually more than a year. It's a year, two, three, four, five years, where you want to be, when, what is your greatest goal in rowing, haven't you found one yet, okay, let me help you. This is important. You need a dedicated professional coach, somebody who has enough experience, somebody who doesn't burn you and say, hey, you should be doing this and this and this and that, and if you can't do this, you're not part of the team. No, somebody who walks with you. Chapter two, the prerequisites, current physique, training background, time, and environment. There are essentially four types of late starters or comeback rowers. Type number one is the former junior athlete. So you probably rowed in high school or when you were a kid, you might have rowed throughout university or college, and then you stopped. Life started, started your career, maybe started a family. Now you are in your 30s, 40s, 50s, and you feel like, wow, oh, that was a time where I was fit and healthy. Oh, I just want to come back to that feeling. Sometimes you're 60 when you do this, sometimes 70. Now, the issue is that you, can't, you cannot treat your body the way you treated it when you were part of a large junior program. That means your body is not in constant repair and build-up mode anymore. Nature has done its part. Now you need to do your part in order to remain healthy, injury-free, and fit. What you did when you were young does not work today. Today, you need a different plan. You need a different strategy. You need to listen to your body much more. You cannot abuse it as much as you used to abuse it when you were young. That's probably the big issue that many comeback rowers have. So a lot of frustration injury happens then. Also, technique has changed. The gear has changed in the last 20, 30 years. Type number two, the I've always been an athlete type of athlete, but not a rower. So these are people who might have done uh, frequent running, 
five times a week, dedicated running practice, maybe even entered competitions, marathons. Um, some, some of my athletes are former cyclists. They have done a lot of cycling at a pretty good level, at a pretty decent competitive level even. Some of them are even former um, you know, triathlon athletes. Some of them were professional athletes in the different sports. Some of them just did a lot of weightlifting and, and general strength and fitness in a gym. You've got a great background, but there are a couple of things you'd be mindful about. What I see with most former lifters are heart issues. There's a lot of pressure on the heart, so this is something where you need to be careful. And this is also something that might, the older you get, that might get in your way of high-performance rowing training to a certain degree. The good thing about rowing is that rowing is not just strength alone, it's strength and endurance. A rowing race, a 1,000 meter rowing race, takes at least three minutes, roughly, up to five minutes. It's a 1K. I'm not even talking about a 20 minute race like a 5K. So usually, usually, I'm not a doctor and you better talk to your own doctor, but usually what I hear from my athletes, what they, what, what they hear from their doctors, that is the ideal form of training and competition because the pressure on the heart is really not comparable to four hard lifts. If you're a former endurance sports athlete, like uh, triathlon, running, cycling, then you've got a great engine, but you don't have the strength to transfer force from the left hand to the right foot. If you did swimming, that's actually quite good. But most people are more into running and cycling. So there, then you need to gain strength in your trunk. That is usually the biggest issue. That's something you can solve with decent strength training that is dedicated to rowing. But you need to be aware of it. And on top, you probably are lacking a bit of raw strength, especially in your upper body. That's the big problem with running and cycling. See, rowing is strength and endurance. It's not just endurance. So you need to catch up on the strength part. But again, if you have a dedicated training plan and a good strategy and a good coach, that is no problem. Type number three. The, well, I've never been into sports at all, but now I think I want to do something for myself. And I saw rowing and it's so much fun. Excellent. The good thing, you don't have any bad technique habits. There is no bad old muscle memory. That is awesome. The second thing, yes, you do need to build up muscles. Um, it's not just muscles alone, because if you build up a muscle properly, I'm not talking about taking supplements and doing all these crazy things. No. A good, solid muscle buildup without supplements. Then your tendons, ligaments, cartilages, all of that, your joints, they have time to adapt to more muscle mass. And that is precisely what we need for the long endurance sessions in rowing. Yeah, but I will talk more about that later when I go through the stages. That's really important. Take your time. Give yourself the time to build yourself up properly before you ramp up the volume and the intensities. That's vital. Type number four. The former high-performance rower who actually never really stopped rowing, right, went right into master's rowing. So started to row as a young person, went into high-performance rowing, possibly national team, possibly world championships, Olympic games. And then instead of quitting rowing completely, went right into master's competitions. There's a funny story. There's a, the former Estonian high-performance rower, Yuri Jansson. And he was a legend in the 90s. And I remember 2008 at the Euro Masters Regatta in Munich, Hüri Janssen showed up again and used a Masters Regatta as a test event to see if he could go for another Olympic medal in a couple of years. And you know what? He actually won another Olympic medal in his 40s. Fantastic athlete. So yes, you've got these crazy types of people as well. The upside, super strong. But downside, if you do what you've always done, it will not work for every stage of life. So the older these people get, the more they focus on the things they actually enjoy doing, which is usually not the things that help them to still advance as a master's athlete. So that would be certain strength exercises, mobilization exercises, uh, full range of motion strength exercises, certain types of cardio that may feel uncomfortable but are highly rewarding, they usually tend to leave out the necessary important stuff for the sake of doing what works best for them. As they've got so much racing under their belt, they're still very fast and sometimes very hard to beat, 
but only to a certain age. And this is where the late starters have an absolute advantage because if they have a professional training plan, they are the ones catching up. Chapter number three, the stages. Just like with the previous video, you might not start with stage one. You might start with stage two or three. Stage one, the current condition is that there is no pelvic mobility, uh, no previous training experience, possibly you overweight and you possibly have injuries. Main objective, we want to achieve the, the basic prerequisites to start with competitive rowing training. If you started with competitive rowing training right then just because you're motivated, hey, welcome to overtraining injuries and frustration. So we need to increase your pelvic mobility, your pelvic full range of motion strength. I will explain what this is in shirt and pants just in a minute. We need to teach you uh, rowing specific strength or training, not necessarily with weights, but learn the basics. Doing so, I recommend one to four sessions per week, not more than that. Because you're not used to training, the least you should do is one day on, one day off. Technique base. Well, you should learn to hinge around your hip, which requires a strong pelvis and a strong interconnection of your entire trunk. That is usually a big issue also with the seasoned rowers. This is where all the injuries come from. This is probably one of the cornerstones of this entire video. So you want to avoid artificial bends in your back. Should you enter competitions during that stage? Why not? Just for fun. But ideally, these competitions should be pretty short distance. I would suggest uh, 1,000 meters at most, no more than that. How should you do your endurance? Partly rowing specific. I would recommend to avoid the linear erg as much as possible. So either the boat, the bar rower, or if you have nothing else available, a rowing tank. If that is not available, by all means, use a linear erg but I recommend no, no longer than 15 minutes in one piece. And then you hop on a bike or take five minutes off doing mobilization because your back cannot handle that. This is where all the injuries come from. Strength, learn proper good mornings. Learn overhead deep squats. Uh, learn hip thrusts and you can learn all of that without weight. These are probably the most essential exercises for rowing training. High intensities? Mm -mm, not much yet. A bit, yes. And I, if I write your training plan, I would certainly put intensities on there. But very, very, very little. Just to keep it fun. Check boxes to complete. Well, you should be able to execute a clean good morning, a clean overhead deep squat, at least to a certain degree deep, and uh, you should be able to have a seated pelvic tilt. I will show you what this is in just a minute on a bike rower. Let's say this works. You move on to stage two. How long a stage takes is up to you. Some, with some people, it's a couple of weeks. With some people, it's a couple of days. With some people, half a year, full year. really depends on where you are. So stage two, you've got pelvic mobility. Okay, so you don't hurt your back anymore. That's, we need to get you out of that zone. That is completed. But you have insufficient strength to hold the trunk as one fully integrated unit for longer than 30 minutes. So this is where we need to work. We need to stabilize your rowing technique to a degree that allows you to do more volume, higher intensities. Uh, if, if this is not given, again, you run a risk of injuries. So you want to avoid that. I recommend still one to four sessions per week, no more than that. It can be on a higher end if you feel more comfortable, but again, one day on, one day off. If you're super motivated, you want to do five to six sessions, spend more time doing mobilization and core training. So I will link the core video that is essentially designed to be impossible to be done. And that is exactly when you improve. The thing is, if you do something that you can already do very well, what's the use of doing it? There's no improvement. Our bodies improve when we throw something at them they can not do. But you also must sure you don't overload your body. And that brings me to a very important point at that stage. As a coach, it's very easy to sell you on the idea only a hard workout is a good workout. And that is not true. Some workouts feel easy but are highly effective. Some workouts feel weirdly exhausting but you can't really grasp it. And that is mostly because you, your body doesn't emit endorphins. And then endorphins make you happy. And they're great. And they usually come when you do really intense workouts. But if you do a really intense workout, every single workout, you're going to be burned quickly. I think this is one of the biggest reasons why CrossFit is on a decline. Simply because people who are willing to do it are burned or injured or both. I think CrossFit is excellent 
if you have a super clean execution and a supervising coach all the time with you. But that's not the case. So CrossFit is just great for the physiotherapy industry. That's my honest opinion. Technique base. Um, you should be able to pull up the trunk on the way forward. Uh, my athletes know what I'm talking about. This is exactly what we did in the Saturday sessions. So go to rmtraining.com. This is where you can join the live sessions. Low back pushing forward. Keep the hip joints in place. So hold the knees down upon the early stages of the recovery. And make sure you have a decent rock forward all the way into the catch and throughout the first part of the leg drive. Uh, which kind of competitions? Pretty much as much as you want, but don't overdo it. Uh, mostly local competitions. Or if you have the chance, look at some bigger regattas just to smell the air. Very, very cool. Good atmosphere. Endurance. I recommend one to three hours of net endurance. So strength, uh, mobilization, stretching goes on top. Strength training becomes now an essential part of your um, overall training plan and strategy. And you can even start to use a bit of weights and add a bit of weights. Okay, high intensities. Yeah, dark practice, mid-race pace. So if you could sprint at a stroke with 35, your race pace should be at around a 28, 27, 28, 30 strokes per minute. And that is where you should work on better technique. Check boxes to complete. Uh, technique progress achieved for that stage. That's important. So you don't hurt your back. This is again an injury preventive measure. Strength training with weights should be executed cleanly so that you don't hurt yourself. Stage three. So where are we now? There is sufficient development of muscles and according joint stability, tendons, ligaments, cartilages, everything has developed to a certain degree that you can actually sustain longer rowing sessions. That is vital. So now we can start with competition oriented training. At that stage, the latest, you should work on shoulder work. So how to bring the shoulders in low into the catch so that your shoulders are interconnected with the trunk the best possible way. That is essential in order to have a very effective upper body swing so you can harvest the body weight factor in rowing, which is important, but mostly overlooked. Most people who start with intensities too early, they will row legs to arms or swing back endlessly and is not effective as well. So this is what separates the average late starter rower from the good ones who get most out of the sport. Okay, I recommend two to five sessions per week. So maybe you can do a double... Uh, a double session so you have I don't know two sessions in a row in two days and then you take a day off that should work by now it's a, a training session is not easy so even if it's endurance it wears on you in different ways technique base in addition to the stages before especially stage two I recommend to learn to prepare the shoulders as I talked about before Keep them low, keep them tucked in, learn how to activate your chest to bring the hands in in a rowing specific motion because rowing is not about pulling. Rowing is about having your arms as extensions of your trunk, bring the arms in and, and really try to use weight right from the get-go. I recommend to enter regional championships up to 1,000 meters. If there are no regional championships, hey, go for the big games, why not? I would not necessarily enter a lot of 5K races at that stage. So 5K stands for 5,000 meters. How much net endurance? Uh, two to five hours and a good deal of that on the bike. Start with full strength training. And from this stage on, uh, high intensities are part of your regular training plan. So if I write your plan, there's a dedicated, competition-oriented, targeted buildup so that the intensities become higher and higher and higher as we reach our peak of season. This way, you don't burn out and you're ready for the peak. And again, Competition or under training means there's a crescendo-like peak towards peak of season and there's a deceleration where we work on the basics again to be better next season so we have more endurance and more strength available. All right, check boxes to complete, uh, mostly technique progress achieved, but also endurance. At that stage, I recommend a lactate step test if you can. Stage four and five. Well, from here, it's a matter of having better physique and better technique. Uh, that is something most late starters in rowing don't realize. Technique is something in rowing that you need to work on consistently. You lose good technique so quickly in rowing. And it's yet so essential that you need to have consistent work on your technique. So in, in stage four, it's all about increasing physique and maintaining technique. That is really all there is. And this is a lot of work. 
So <laughs> ask my Saturday athletes on TMRM training, lots of masses on there. It's not easy to maintain technique. Yet once you have it, it's quicker to get back into it in case you lose it. Okay, stage four, learn to use body weight and tension from knees to up wraps. That's the last step before we can work on Olympic details. Into one to 5K races or longer, you're fit enough. Two to five hours, uh, rowing specific. Rec still should be done on a bike. Rec for uh, everybody who's not familiar with my training zones, Rec is the lowest, lowest, lowest intensity, which is almost like a walk in the park. So this should be done on a bike. Uh, on linear ergs, I recommend to do um, the intensity slightly above that as well, only on a bike to help your back recover because the linear erg is not good for your back. It's not a true rowing environment. Okay, strength is a regular, strength now is a regular part of your fully integrated structured training plan and strategy. So it's a full strength training. It's not always strength. So... My training plans consist of strength weeks. Then we try to interconnect the peripheric muscle groups with core and cardio. Uh, cardio. <laughs> a rowing specific endurance. That, that's probably a, a more precise term. High intensities and checkboxes, same as in stage three. And the only upgrade to stage number five is that you can now go for four to seven sessions per week and you really learn Olympic level technique and you might increase your endurance two to six hours rowing specific. And if you have time, more hours on the bike. But again, most masters athletes are somewhere in, in business life, have family, so I cannot recommend 10 hours, 12 hours. And there's also, there's also a trade-off. Of course, you can peak. So I do have masters athletes who do have seven, eight, nine, 10 hours of endurance per week for certain weeks of the year. If they say, hey, I've got the time, uh, I can do more, excellent. Let's do this and schedule that. But then, we go back again. So these, ladies and gentlemen, are the five steps that I recommend. These are the five stages. Uh, but what I will do now is I will um, go on a work floor in the bio row workshop and show you on a bio row the seated pelvic tilt I was referring to, which is, I think, responsible if you can't do this for a lot of back injuries. Okay, the seated pelvis tilt is, is vital for, for any kind of rowing. The thing is that most people, when they learn to row, they do it like this. They bring the hands forward and try to pull the trunk with the hands forward, but this is not how it works. What you actually need to do is with the hands forward, you need to do an active pelvic rotation. So this thing here. And while you do this, you need to keep, you need to keep your, your elbows pretty loose and your knees down because your knees stabilize your hip joint and if your knees bend how do you want to do a rotation forward that really doesn't work so a lot of people who bend the knees early try to catch up now get this round back so what you need to do is learn how to hold the knees down yes if you're super tight this will be tight in your hamstrings keep your shoulders loose elbows low and rotate that is a seated pelvic tilt See, going from the finish forward here, this is essential to be able to do this and later on hold it. A lot of people then do this on the way to the catch. You see how the back becomes round? This is where you need to remain stable and tall. And it's not just, it's not just doing it once correctly here. It is a permanent post-correction because once you bend your knees, you're tempted to do this that's a pelvic tilt in a wrong way. What I need to do is with the hands away, have a pelvic tilt. I'm pulling my ventral chain, so it's the front of my torso. I'm trying to pull it long. So I'm trying to pull it long, go forward. And as I go forward, I'm trying to keep this here alive into the catch during the leg drive. And at the leg drive, many people at the catch do this. That's that's poison for your back because the small muscles here cannot hold it. You need to go through the lats. So hold it, hold it, and then be able to have a decent hip swing. And that is essentially what I'm trying to coach. You have to be able to protect your back first before you can start to think about more volume, more intensities. And this is unfortunately not given with all rowing programs. The, a, a late starter is immediately thrown into that, okay, let's do a 1K, let's do this. No, it's too early. You need time to build the muscles, to build the stability. 
Okay, ladies and gents, I hope this video was interesting. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to work with me, my website is rmtraining.com. Connect with me on a rowing.zone. That's the rowers enthusiast platform. Just founded it, slowly growing. It's also, um, it's got a free classified ads page. So anything you want to sell, you can list it there for free. My handle is at arm. I'm looking forward to talk to you. And if you're interested in the beautiful by rower, that's my project. I started 23 years ago and has grown into a company. And it was a lot of sweat and insecurity to make this happen. But as with everything, I'll try to make it the best possible product. So my customers say that the Biro is by far the best rowing machine on the market. And that is really our aim. Everything we do is top notch. It's, it's not something where you say, ah, we reduce quality to make it cheaper. No. It has its price and it offers a value no no nothing else can and that is realistic rowing it's the fun it's got the imbalance factor you can do sweep rowing you can connect them yeah uh, it connects with kino maps i will do a dedicated video of how to connect the by row of kino maps it shows you your symmetry force left right and it's just it's just a true rowing motion and it helps you to improve your technique off the water i've actually taught a couple of athletes how to row on the by rower so that they were able to transfer that knowledge into the boat. So the first time they sat in a boat, they knew exactly how to row. All they had to learn was the blade work. With this being said, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I hope it was worth your time. Thank you very much for your subscription. It means a lot to me and for sharing this video. With this being said, rmtraining.com is my website. I'm very much looking forward to see you in the next video. Until then, have a good day. Bye-bye.